if you look at the party now, how much of a change has there been from that time to where we are now? Is it a much more a stronger and a more unified party that you're, uh, that you're heading up? I think those are two uh, very uh, pertinent words you used, a, a stronger party and, and a unified party. We've taken a lot of, uh, a lot of opportunity since um, we had those meetings um, to continue to uh, discuss the issues and, and look how to improve what we've done. And uh, right now our parliamentary team is very strong, uh, led by a very strong cabinet. Uh, the backbench, uh, I've been very pleased in the last session of the House, uh, the continued development of backbench colleagues. I've been very pleased with the performance uh, in the Senate. We had a new member of the Senate, uh, Senator Ball, lead through gaming legislation, which has to be one of the highlights of the calendar, uh, of the parliamentary calendar year. And, um, if you're going to be successful, you have to learn from everything you do, uh, whether it's successful or whether it's not successful. And certainly in politics, um, you know, the focus of the people is always on you and um, you know the OBA being a new party uh, winning the election um, thrust into a position of governance which was very difficult because we found that uh, we knew that government was in a very difficult position with the budget and the deficit and the economy and all those type of things um, there was a lot of learning that we had to do every day and I think we accomplished a lot by, by growing stronger as a group um, and if you look at some of our individuals and how they've strengthened and really stepped up into leadership roles, um, I've been very delighted to see that. There's been quite a lot said recently about some standards of behaviour in, uh, in the House of Assembly. Do, do you think there's the people, the, the MPs need to take stock and, and need to think about their responsibility to the public and the way they behave in the House? Yes, most definitely. I, I've been involved um, in um, the upper or lower chamber now for uh, 17 years, and I've seen the ebbs and flow of debate. You know, I've seen the highest level, and I've seen a level where you know perhaps uh, most people in the chamber at that time uh, would think it, it needs to be raised up. Um, and when you get into those 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 lower points of debate, it's it's a time when you have to reflect and. Um, those who are sincere and genuine about providing the leadership that the people who elected you expect um, will pull up their socks and, and take stock of it. When a former premier stands up um, as an outsider now who's watching the political debate mm -hmm. and says, okay, it's up to all of us to raise the level of the debate, um, I think the wake-up call has been received by everyone involved. I know within the government we have... Um, um, had numerous discussions in our caucus meeting and our parliamentary caucus meetings about what is expected. I've had meetings with the, uh, the House uh, Whip um, and the House Leader about what is expected. I've discussed it at Cabinet personally with my colleagues. So um, you know, I think it's going to be a very teachable moment for all of us up there. And, and uh, uh, going forward, uh, we committed with the Speaker to do whatever we could to bring a higher level of debate and decorum to the House. Because remember, when we put our name forward to uh, stand as contestants in elections mm -hmm. and be elected in House, it's one of the greatest honors um, and respect that you could ever get. It's the first day you walk into the House of Assembly and you're called across the bar. We should never, ever lose sight of uh, the honor that is attributed to being elected as a member and how we have to conduct ourselves. If, if we're going to really see meaningful progress going forward in the year 2015, there are real critical times where we need to put politics aside. And you have to put politics aside when you're building your economy. We all agreed on um, the tourism plan going forward. Uh, even the opposition agreed that the Bermuda Tourism Authority was the way to go after we explained to them what happened on it. Now we need to make it work. We need to support them and make it work. Because if we, if we, dis, if we at this early stage, if we continue to haggle and quarrel over little things, we shouldn't be surprised in a year or two years' time when we don't see the progress we expected because we are nitpicking over things when we should have been working together, you know, building relationships, locking hands, and sharing ideas so we can move forward. There'll be plenty of time for nitpicking over things before the next election, but over the next couple of years, we've got a lot of work to do. Because if we really are earnest about putting people back to work and creating an economy that works for all Bermudians and helping those individuals who had to go to Old Boys Point and get a meal on Christmas Eve or to the 
the Salvation to the uh, Seventh Day Adventists and get a meal on Christmas Day, or who go sleep at Salvation Army every night. We need to put politics aside, lock hands, and be meaningful in how we want to work together. And the last thing I will say on that is, I take people at their face value. So on the last day of the House on December 12th, in spite of everything that the opposition leader has said through the last session, he stood up and he gave Christmas wishes. And he, he gave what I would say was uh, a desire to work across the floor when we could. I will hold him to that commitment.